الحمد لله وصلاة وسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد حبيت في الله the first time I've ever seen anything like this oh my gosh it's a pack of coyotes الحمد لله look at that they don't see me yet سبحان الله a couple of coyotes so what I wanted to talk about الحبيت في الله is the importance of the heart and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the <clears throat> the characteristics of the munafiqeen he said fi qulubihim marad wa zadahum allahu marada he said subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al kareem he said in their hearts is a sickness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases their sickness wa iyadun billah wa iyakum min dhalik may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from sickness of the heart and the heart habitatillah is a soft morsel of flesh that easily changes it quick changes it changes to good it changes to evil you can be inclined imma kafirun wa imma 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 shakirin or imma kafura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the heart, it can either be grateful or it can be ungrateful. And so it can be can become a disobedient and wicked heart. And it can at the same time, or on another occasion, or switch in its entirety. to total disobedience to Allah in gratitude. It can be grateful and an obedience to Allah or it can be in total disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And as we mentioned about the munafiqun is that they, the hypocrites, that their hearts uh, have a have a sickness, and that sickness is kufr. That their hearts are so hard to an extent to where they only show Islam outwardly, but inwardly they are on disobe- They disbelieve in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His religion. And this is immensely, should be immensely frightful for us as, as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, so we can't cease to give immense importance to the heart that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned He said, in the fee jizid mudra. So in the body is a morsel of flesh. Either salah ha salah ha jizid kullu. You know, if this morsel of flesh is uh, sound or pure or healthy, then the whole body is healthy. We the fasid ha fasid ha jizid kullu. And if it is sick, Then the whole body is sick. Allah wa hiya qalb. Verily it's the heart. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the importance of safeguarding our hearts. So then the, it begs the question, how can we safeguard our hearts? What are the things that we need to do in order to protect us? First, astainu uh, billah. You know, seek refuge and support and help and assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asking Allah wa ta'ala for guidance as we do every salat, ihdina suratul mustaqeem. Guide us to the suratul mustaqeem, to the straight path. And 
A second way is by immersing ourselves in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Qur'an. Reading the Qur'an often. Reciting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing that as a, taking that medicine, that medicine of guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So the Qur'an is a medicine for you. It's a medicine, it's shafa for your illnesses, for your spiritual illness, for the illnesses of nifaq, hypocrisy, the illnesses of kufr, of, of, of disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the illnesses, uh, all those spiritual illnesses, and even physical illnesses. So here we have a prescription from our Lord, the one who created us, who knows us better than we know ourselves, but yet we cease to really uh, make use of that medicine and those means for dealing with the, the shaitan and doubt and kufr, kufr and hypocrisy. And of course, likewise, Ahabat is, is reading the seerah of the Prophet wasallam. And following his authentic sunnah, that the more we increase our iman by practicing and following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, likewise, this will be a means for spiritual cure. This will help to cure us from our ailments and help to keep us on guidance. Another means of course is adhkar remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicating to him often kathra to dua kathra to adhkar so supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking him for, for assistance and guidance and for your needs and to protect you and safeguard you and making those afkar, those ways of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are mentioned in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to safeguard yourself. Also, as a final means I want to mention is kathra to nawafil, is praying uh, extra prayers as much as possible and extra uh, fasting. So fasting, seeking to fulfill the commandment and the maqsad of fasting, the, the, the intent of fasting, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ سِيَامْ كَمَا كُتِبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, He says, it is prescribed for you fasting. Fasting is prescribed for you, like it was prescribed for those who came before you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you will gain taqwa. So, Fasting is a means to gain taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're fasting and keeping cognizant of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just with, strain, with, with uh, restraining from food and drink, no, but restraining from looking at the muharramat, restraining from speaking about the haram, uh, muharramat, restraining from listening to the muharramat, and doing those things to fulfill your heart with iman and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that's going to be a me medicine for you. That's going to assist you and help you and support you against the shaitan. And supplication to protect the iman that you do possess. Supplication to protect you from the shaitan and the shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn. All of those things, all of that asking for the support of your Lord is going to assist you. And this is what we need to concern ourselves with. Ahabatifillah. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.